Take a look up on the screen. If you would. Who remembers something I preached back in 2015? Well, good, because I'm going to preach some of it again. Uh, What you see there on the screen, what are they? Chess pieces? No. Bells? No. Not bells. Weights? Jingle bells. They're weights. You know, what most people hate is weights. These are from 1888. And they are standard weights because, as you know, things used to be weighed out. They still are. You buy a lot of products that are on the shelf, like cereal and flour and things like that, you buy it by weight. You buy a sack of flour, it's going to be a pound or something like that. Does it matter if it says a pound, but you don't get a pound? Does that matter? If you're paying for a pound, there's an old expression and it comes from this time, pound for pound. Which means that things have to be equal and just. And now we live in a time, I mean, something like this seems old fashioned, but it's still in use. There is existing somewhere in Washington, D.C., division of weights and measures. If you go to the gas station here, there's a sticker on the gas pump. Rondagonia caught a gas station cheating him on gas. He had a truck that had two gas tanks on it. And I used to ride in that truck. I knew the truck well. And he would let one tank run completely out. And when he'd feel the engine sputtering, he would flip a switch in the other tank. So he always knew exactly how much gas went in that tank. Because he always emptied it and he drove on the other tank. So he was going to this gas station. I won't mention the name, but he was going to this gas station. And they would come out. That that was back in a day when a guy would come out and fill your gas. And he noticed that they were charging him for gas in that tank. And there was not enough gas in that tank. He knew that they were cheating him on the gas. And he called the Division of Weights and Measures. And they came out and tested the pumps and found out they'd been cheating everybody on their gas. You would think, you know, a slight variance on a gallon of gas wouldn't make much, but if you sell thousands and thousands of gallons of gas every week, that adds up to a ton of money. Would that make you angry if you found out things were not just? And like I said, we live in a time, I I mentioned that Bureau of Weights and Measures, they actually have things like this Under glass, mind you, under glass. Why? Because we're weighing things now in this world on the atomic scale. We can measure things by the atom now. Nanoparticles, things that cannot even be seen in a microscope, we have the ability to measure. And they keep actual weights under glass to keep dust from getting on them because those weights are the standard by which everything else is weighed in this country and around the world. In England, it's the king's measurement. Whatever the king decides, that's what the measurement is. And they do it like us. They keep it under glass and protected because nobody should ever be cheated. Amen? And this is how they use it. So, have you heard the expression, he's got his thumb on the scales? What does that mean? It means he's weighing something out for you to buy, and he's making it look like you're getting more than what you're actually getting. You're paying for things that you don't get. 
And believe it or not, God hates it. I want you to think about, it's a very simple verse. Where's my Bible? Exodus chapter 20, turn there. Exodus chapter 20. Exodus 20, 70th chapter of the Bible. I love that. I think that's on purpose. And in um, verse 15, four words. Thou shalt not, what? Steal. God says, if it's your property, you have rights to own things. You own a house. You own a car. You own your phone. You own the money that's in your bank. Nobody has a right to that except you. And even God said that. Thou shalt not steal. And when you have an unjust weight or an unjust measurement or an unjust balance, God calls that theft. He calls it stealing. And God has specific things in His Bible. What I'm hoping to give you this morning, I want you to get a little fired up over what's going on in our country. Because it is a travesty. We know that they have stolen this election. We know it. We went to bed thinking that Donald Trump was winning in certain states. And then these polling places dismissed the Republican watchers, run them out, and then all of a sudden hundreds of thousands of ballots showed up. They stole the election. I want you to look at these two verses on the screen. Psalm 34, 15. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. Do you believe God's word? See, it's times like this that God... I mean, think of what Jesus is doing in Matthew 25. He is separating sheep from goats. And does Christ always judge righteously? Now, in our minds, we're sort of fixed on focusing on temporary results. But understand that God's kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. God is concerned with both temporary results and everlasting results. In fact, I'll give you an example. I, it took me years to understand this parable. Jesus taught a parable about an unjust judge. And I, I, couldn't, I couldn't fathom that. Why, why, why is he talking about this unjust judge like he's some good guy? This woman came to appeal to this judge who took bribes, he favored other people over other people. It was obvious. That was, he was known for that. That was his reputation. But this woman, this widow, kept crying to him saying, Avenge me of my adversaries. And he wouldn't do it. Until finally, this woman kept going and kept going and kept going and wouldn't give up and said, Avenge me of my adversaries. And the unjust judge said, i got to get this woman off me. Either that or I'm going to have to kill her. I can't take this anymore. I'm sick of it. See, you know what he did? He avenged her of her adversaries. Now, here's the lesson in that. If an unjust, wicked, bribed judge could eventually do what's right because of the perseverance of one person, how much more God, who is not unjust, in fact, Turn to 1 John 1, 9. Maybe in a 30 minutes or so, I'll get to my sermon notes. By the way, you didn't come to church to dismiss at noon, did you? Did you come to hear God's word? Thank you for that. Restaurant's not going to run out of food. I'm going to leave here and go get my Hardy's mushroom burger. David, do you, where's David. Barney Fives out there asleep again. Do you crave certain things now? 
Certain foods. Still the same, but my taste buds have changed. Oh yeah. I'm I'm like apple juice and Hardy's mushroom Swiss burgers. I went through a period though of like thinking that I ate very salty. Extreme. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh first John one nine. Read that verse. If we confess our sins, he, who's he? God is what? And what? To forgive us our sins. Now, let me ask you a question. What if you sin the same sin again? Does God still forgive it? If he doesn't, all of us are in a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. Because there's no way that we've only done something one time. We keep doing it. Does God forgive us when we ask, when we repent, when God brings godly sorrow to us and we can't stand it anymore and we do what Psalm 32 said, we cry unto God, God has mercy on us and He covers our sins. Does He do that? Yes, God is not unjust. So back to this. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and His ears are open to their cry. Does God care? Does He hear our prayers? I've never, ever have said that Donald Trump is the most righteous, holy advocate for all of us Christians. I've never said that. But you have to admit, we found great liberty in that president and we know that the next one is going to take those liberties away or try to. Brother Reg said it yesterday in his table in the wilderness. I've been saying it for years. The Second Amendment, once they have taken that away, that protects the rest of them, including our right to free speech. You are already being censored in the things that you're saying on social media, are you not? Absolutely. Proverbs 15.3, the eyes of the Lord are in where? Did God see the cheating? Does God know about it? Beholding the evil and the good. God sees it all. And is he going to judge? You know what the Bible tells us to do? I'm getting ahead of myself and I have this in my notes. You know what the Bible tells us to do? Let God have it. Trust him. I mean, I've been thinking for days, what am I going to do? About what they did. What can I do? I would have to eliminate probably two thirds of this world who are far left wing, liberal, evil people. And they're very powerful and they have a lot of money. And we know that China is behind some of this. We know it. China does not condone Bible Christianity at all. And when they take over this country, what does that mean for us? It means that we're going to still keep standing. And it doesn't matter. Let me break for a minute. When I got home last night, I was a nervous wreck driving through Iowa in that wind. And I was very tense and I wanted to kind of settle down a little bit. So I, I watched a video on YouTube and it was about a group of Jews that were recruited in World War II. They spent a year in training. They learned how to kill with their hands. They learned how to kill with weapons. They learned how to make bombs. They learned how to uh, build radios. They learned Morse code. They learned how to do espionage and they learned how to spy. These men escaped Nazi Germany as Jews came to America and they volunteered. This guy said, this Jewish guy said, the day after Pearl Harbor, I found myself standing in line in Brooklyn waiting to enlist. And he said, they took several of these men that were Jews, that were German born Jews, that knew the language, had the right accent. They were going to send them back to do espionage. They went to uh, an area where they knew there were some family members and friends that were also against Hitler and they stayed with them and they did spy work 
And practically everything that the Germans were going to do, these Jewish men posing as German soldiers got the intel because they would go to officers club and these officers would just talk and they'd say, yeah, we got 35 trains. We've got 35 trains ready to roll through Italy to help the war effort in Italy. Those guys reported back and our bombers destroyed every one of those trains. The next day, they captured one of these Jewish men. They caught him burning notes in the fireplace, the SS, the Gestapo. And they took this man in, they chained him to a chair, and they began to beat him mercilessly to get him to tell what he knew. Have you ever thought about that? They put a gun barrel in his mouth sideways, and he said they'd give him a haymaker, and he said his back teeth, he spit them out. Blood everywhere. And you know what? He never said a word. Never gave up his information. You know what happened? The day after, they beat him almost to death. Put him in a jail cell naked for days. The day after that, Germany surrendered. Several days after he had been in that jail cell, a German soldier who was a doctor came in, escorted him out, clothed him, took him to a house where the men that beat him up were sitting there at a table eating. And they invited him to sit down with them and eat because they knew the war was over. And that German general who ruled over that town, it was Innsbruck, Austria, surrendered himself to that Jew that he had beat up and gave himself up. God bless that man. But he never turned his back on his country. Have you ever thought about that? God would have to be with you. Amen? I'm not trying to give you fear. I'm trying to tell you the truth. Turn to Deuteronomy 25. I got to move through this. But that story just blessed my heart. Here's this lost man, this lost Jew. But he believed in something. He believed in it so much that he was willing to shed his blood and die for the country that took him in and treated him as an equal where he left Germany and he said he knows for a fact that his mom and his brother were gassed in Auschwitz and they, he knows that his father died in a concentration camp in Poland. I think it was Dachau. We haven't seen times like that in a long time in this country. But are they coming? Deuteronomy 25 verse 13. God said, Thou shalt not have in thy bag divers weights, a great and a small. Thou shalt not have in thine house diverse measures, a great and a small. But thou shalt have a perfect and a just weight. A perfect and just measure shalt thou have, that thy days, listen to, listen to the blessing that God gives, that thy days may be lengthened in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. I'm telling you right now that those who cheat in this country, their days are numbered. And it will not be us rising up. It will be by the hand of God. That thy days may be lengthened in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. For all that do such things and all that do unrighteously are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. That means that God cannot stand the sight of that. When a man cheats his neighbor over a sack of flour, God says it's an abomination. God says it better be equal. And we know that this election was nothing equal. We know it. Leviticus 19.35 You shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. In meteor, which means measurements, 
in weight or in measure. Just balances, just weights, a just ephah and a just hen shall you have. I am the Lord your God which brought you out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall you observe all my statutes and all my judgments and do them. I am the Lord. I am content, not happy, but I am content with losing an election that I know was fair. And they're accusing Trump of trying to steal the election. But how many votes, how many votes did he try to slip in, in places? Job 31, 6, let me be weighed in an even balance that God may know my integrity. When you stand before God, do you want to be judged righteously? What did that verse say in 1 John 1, 9? God is faithful and just. That means God doesn't break even his own laws. God doesn't break them. Proverbs 20, verse 10. Divers weights and divers measures, both of them alike, are an abomination to the Lord. Let's pray. Father, I ask your blessings on this message. Father, you fired me up by my friend, my pastor. He's angry. I'm angry. But Father, I can't do anything about it. I have no power. I'm not courageous. I'm not bold. I give up easily, give in easily. But Father, I stand by my Lord and Savior who's not afraid. He wasn't afraid when he lay down on the cross and they nailed him there. He knew it had to be done. And he did it. And I'm not like that. So Father, I ask God that you show us the way. We know God from your word. We know you. We know how you are. Because your word declares your nature. And none of this, God, was outside of your vision. You saw it all. And Father, they may get away with it in this life. But they will not get away with it when they stand in front of Jesus Christ, the righteous. I'm thankful that Jesus is my advocate and not my adversary. Father, we know that we have an accuser of the brethren standing before you right now. Accusing us of things that we've done wrong. But we have an advocate with Jesus Christ the righteous. Who stands up for us and says, their sins are gone. Father, would you judge? Would you judge righteously in this nation? We ask for your guidance. We ask, Father, for your courage. We ask you, God, to deliver us and show us the truth. We pray this in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, Amen. My wife, after she was, she was looking at election things, you know, and I want you to understand, don't believe a word. CNN, M NBC, ABC, CBS, Fox, don't believe a word they say. They deliberately released the projection winner that Biden was the next president and my son called me, our daughter-in-law called me, my wife said, they said it, he's, the, he's going to be the next president. I said, Lisa, the press doesn't choose the president. They don't have a voice in this. They did that on purpose because they knew Trump was fixing to come out and say, I'm going to sue every one of these states that cheated on this thing. I'm going to go after them. And they went out ahead of that to spread disinformation. They did this in Germany. 1933 they did this. We're seeing history relived right in front of us. And my wife asked the question. She said, how is it that they can live with themselves knowing that they won by cheating? And I said, Lisa, you don't remember, we were raised differently. We were taught that you don't lie. You don't steal. You don't commit adultery. You don't, you don't murder. You don't murder children. We were taught that these things were wrong. These are immoral. And I said, everything that is unrighteous, the liberal left Democrats stand for in this country. 
They kill babies. They promote sodomite marriage. They clamp down on the preaching of the gospel and the truth. They don't want it out there. They do not play fair and they have no conscience about it whatsoever. Roy and Bonnie, Hemphill, used to be election officials. Do you think they ever cheated? There's a video of a woman, fill, election official, filling out Biden votes, putting them in the stack, one after another. No conscience whatsoever. Look at Psalm 43. Here's what the Bible says about these people. And if you think I'm going to back down from this, you're wrong. You could not get me to vote Democrat for a million dollars, I wouldn't do it. Psalm 43, verse 1. Judge me, O God, and half of the spineless Republicans who will not stand up for this thing. Men in power who have the ability to do something about it, but refuse to do something about it. Probably because somebody's got pictures on them. Probably because they... Been on somebody else's payroll other than the federal government. Psalm 43 verse 1. Judge me, O God, and plead my cause against what? An ungodly nation. I've said this before. If we leave America, where are we going? You going to Canada? You going to Australia? Going to Britain? Going to Kenya? Where are you going to go? There is no other place. This is our land, and we ought to cry out for what's right. Verse 2. Oh, no, excuse me. God, oh, God, plead my cause against an ungodly nation. Oh, deliver me from the deceitful and unjust Biden man. That man's a pig, a pervert, a thief. He's in the pocket of China who pulls his strings. Verse 2, for thou art the God of my strength. Why dost thou cast me off? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Oh, send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me into thy holy hill and to thy tabernacles. I've said this before and I'm going to say it again. If we lose this country, we have a better one. And I'm not jealous no, I, I got to say that differently. I am jealous of those who have already gone there. Because I wouldn't mind being there myself some days. Amen? Send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me and let them bring me into thy holy hill and to thy tabernacles. So... You can either follow CNN and that sodomite Anderson Cooper. Or you can follow this. Proverbs 28, turn there. Here's what I'm asking. Does God hate an unjust man? Yeah. Now they say, oh, you're preaching hate. You better believe I am. God hates the wicked. You know what God said about Esau? Jacob have I loved. Esau have I hated. Proverbs 28 verse 4. They that forsake the law praise the wicked. Ain't that true? But such as keep the law contend with them. We don't want anything unfair. We want it to be equal and fair. We want every legal vote counted. And I'm not talking about persons who are in this country illegally. They should not have a right to vote. And their vote should not be counted. Evil men understand not judgment. Biden, Kabbalah, um, Pelosi, Schumer. These guys know nothing about righteous judgment. They've been cheaters all their lives. But they that seek the Lord understand all things. Better is the poor that walketh in his uprightness than he that is perverse in his ways, though he be rich. 
How does Joe Biden come up with a net worth of over $10 million on a politician's salary? How does that happen? Cheating. Verse 7, whoso keepeth the law is a wise son, but he that is a companion of riotous men, that's Antifa, shameth his father. He that by usury and unjust gain, that's those votes, increaseth his substance. Why does Joe want to be president? Because the Biden crime family needs the money. What does the Bible say is the root of every evil thing? The love of money. He shall gather it for him that will pity the poor. Now, look at that verse, Gary. What does that say? God is saying, go ahead, you wicked people. Gather up all that money. I'm going to give it to the poor. And take it away from you. Read that verse again. He that by usury and unjust gain increaseth his substance. He shall gather it for him that will pity the poor. God said, I'm going to take it away. And give it to the righteous. So they can give it to the poor. Now, do you believe the Bible? Proverbs 29. Turn there. Well... My daddy voted Democrat. My grandpa voted Democrat. And I've always voted Democrat. Well, you know what you are? You're partners with thieves. My daddy, true story, my daddy favored the Democrat congressman that was in this district, Dick Gebhardt, because Gebhardt's office helped my dad get his retirement his medical retirement from the Corps of Engineers. And I never would say anything, but one day my daddy said, I found out that Gebhardt was for all these sodomites and abortion. That ain't right. And I'm going, yes! He gets it! At some point, you're going to have to come out of all the wickedness in this nation. You're going to have to separate from it. Whoso is a partner with a thief hateth his own soul. He heareth cursing and bereath it not. I, I get on to people when my kids were little. If we were at McDonald's or someplace and some guy was dropping F-bombs anywhere, I'd say, hey, I got kids here. Watch your language. You know, they got mad at me for saying that. I don't care. One woman turned around and told me, she said, shut your mouth. And I went, I had a mouthful of it and God wouldn't let me say it. Verse 25, the fear of man bringeth a snare. Don't be afraid of these people. The fear, and listen, I'm telling you, that is my nature. My mama will tell you story after story after story of every fight that I ran away from. Just mom, don't tell them. I am by my nature a fearful person. I give up easily. I give in easily. That is my nature. But a man can be pushed only so far. Amen. The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Many seek the ruler's favor, but every man's judgment cometh from the Lord. Is God going to judge these people? Is God going to judge an election official who knowingly brought in false ballots? An unjust man is an abomination to the just, and he that is upright in the way is an abomination to the wicked. We hate them. But don't worry, they hate us. And when they get in power, they will do everything they can to shut our mouths. 
You think, Rose, that they'll put a hold on our bank account so we can't pay our bills? Does the government have that power? You better believe they do. If they don't like what I say, they can cut us off at the bank and we're done. And I've had people ask me, Pastor, are we going to have to go to the underground church? Nope. I'm not hiding. I'd rather die than hide. The only hiding that I'm going to do is in the wings of my father. An unjust man is an abomination to the just. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 5. The just Lord is in the midst thereof. He will not do iniquity. Every morning doth he bring his judgment to light. He faileth not. But the unjust knoweth no shame. And I'm telling you. Secret service agents have said. Joe Biden will walk through his house. Buck naked. Making eye contact with female uh, Secret Service agents. You've seen him, how he treats young girls. His own granddaughter has told things in her diary about her uncle Hunter and her grandpa Joe. That's wicked. He knoweth no shame. Matthew chapter 5. Verse 45. That you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. You know, I drove through farmland America I, yesterday. I watched them, those combines out in those fields, pulling in that corn, pulling in those soybeans. The, hey, that's their money for the year. They sell that at the markets, and that's their pay for their work. Now, are every one of those farmers that I saw in Iowa and northern Missouri, are they all Christians? No. Are some of them drunkards, adulterers, liars? Some of them even had Biden signs in their yard. But you know, God blesses them the way he blesses everybody else. That's what it says, amen. It is by God's grace that people are alive on this earth right now doing the wicked things that they're doing. It is by God's grace. But God is watching. Second Peter chapter 2. Turn there. This, listen. This is, this is for all of us that are asking the question, why is this happening? Why is God allowing this to happen? Now I've said it before. It is not the government's job to promote the gospel and God's righteousness. That's the church. We depend way too much on government. And God may have to teach us the lesson. Don't trust them. Trust me. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4. If God spared not the angels that sinned. You know what he's talking about, don't you? The angels that took wives. They fell. They lost. They left their first estate. They committed unrighteousness. And God judged them. He put them in prison for it. If God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness. There are devils right now that are in the lower part of the earth that are in prison right now because of what they did. If God won't spare the angels, God won't spare mankind. 
Verse 5, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person. You know what Noah's name means? Rest. His father Lamech named Noah for the word rest, saying, Noah will bring comfort. That's a paraphrase of what he said. In the ark was rest as God judged the outside world. So, when it starts raining, Gary, where are we going to be? In the ark. Are we going to be hanging outside going, Oh, I hope I hang on to the end. We're going to be in it. God spared not the old world, verse 5, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a, right, a preacher of righteousness. Noah was a preacher. I need this. I need this. I need this. To tell me, Mike, keep preaching. Don't quit. Don't stop. Don't shut up. Because it is my nature to run. A preacher of righteousness bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an ensample to those that after should live ungodly. Do you think God's going to spare this country? you think God's going to spare these people that kill them babies? That are sodomites? That are molesting children? you think God's going to spare them people? Absolutely not. Making them an ensample unto those that after shall live ungodly. This is how God treats unrighteousness. And delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. I've had it. I've seen enough. I can't take it. I can't stand it. It's eating me up. And I want God to do something about it. For that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord, look at this verse. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations. God knows how to deliver you, doesn't he? What, John, what's he saved you from? Pam, what's he saved you from? Phil, what has God blessed you with? Brian, what has God protected you from? What has God pulled you out of? Cannot God save every one of us? Amen. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust under the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly them, look at this, chiefly them that walk after the flesh and the lust of uncleanness and despise what? When you knowingly fill out a ballot that is false, you despise government. And I think Thousands of people are in on it. Male men who knowingly post dated mail to make it look like it came in on election day so it'd be counted. Knowingly did it. In fact, one guy got caught, he made a mistake. He posted some of them November 4th, accidentally. Chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government. Presumptuous are they, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. They hate God. They hate your God. They hate your Savior. They hate your Bible. And they hate you. Biden going around telling everybody, I'm for all of America. Baloney. Baloney. You big liar. Turn to Revelation 22. Now look at your Bible. I'm almost done. Almost done. Yep, almost done. Revelation 22, 11. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. Listen to me. When God shut the door of the ark, do you think he was going to open it back up because somebody at the last second changed their mind? When they saw the rain coming down and the floods coming up and they decided, well, maybe God was right. Noah let us in. Noah couldn't let them in. Noah didn't shut them out. God did. And let me tell you something. In this world, there's going to be wicked people surrounding us every day. We're going to have to learn to live with it. 
Let the un, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he that is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. Just because they're getting away with it does not mean we become them. Verse 12, and behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me. Do you believe God's word? Say amen. amen. To give every man according as his work shall be. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs, sorcerers, whoremongers, murderers, including baby murderers, idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. CNN, ABC, NBC, Fox, MSNBC, you name it. They're lying through their teeth. Now, one more place, Psalm 92. I want you to underline this. I want you to put your, you know that little, that little string you got in your Bible? I want you to open to Psalm 92 and just let her lay right there. And when you, when you get up and look at the news, and it makes you so mad and so nervous, I want you to open your Bible back up to Psalm 92 and read verse 7. When the wicked spring as the grass, and when all the workers of iniquity do flourish, that means they flowered out, they blossomed. They're showing their true colors. Why does God let them do that? It is that they shall be destroyed forever. You notice in Matthew 13, when Jesus told us the parable of the wheat and the tares, what did he say in his wisdom that he was going to do? I'm not going to do anything about it right now. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait until the harvest. That way, it's going to be obvious that their tares and their wheat. And I'm going to gather up all the tares. Don't you worry. I'm going to gather up every one of them. I'm going to bind them together and I'm going to burn every one of them. But my wheat, I'm going to put in my garner, and I will save them forever. How long does the seed last? If that seed is kept in a dry place, how long will it last? Thousands and thousands of years that seed is still viable. Did you know that? You know what that's a picture of? God doesn't let his saved people rot. He saves them. Why is God letting these people get away with their unjust ways? So that they can blossom, then he'll get them. Do we believe what God said? We might as well. Because I don't believe Google anymore. I don't believe Facebook. I don't trust YouTube. I don't trust Twitter. I don't trust newspapers. I don't trust news reporters. I don't trust none of that bunch. The only thing that I trust is this book. And I needed this message as bad or more than you needed to hear it.